this conversation is going to be really, really interesting. I'm looking forward to having this conversation because of my own background as a pharmacist and because of my own background as a lawyer. Um, today's talk is going to be about the top eight issues that happened in pharmacy in 1990, I'm sorry, in 2009 that, that are going to um, affect how pharmacy occurs in the next decade, shall we say, and what has been happening that will change uh, the impact of pharmacy. This is the Darshan Talks podcast, regulatory guy, irregular podcast with host Darshan Kulkarni. You can find the show on Twitter at Darshan Talks or the show's website at darshantalks.com. So the number one issue I would talk about is the rise of cannabis. And um, as you may know, and there are numerous talks that I've put out there already, uh, there has been several, there have been several states that actually have legalized uh, the use of medical cannabis. Um, there have also been states that have um, legalized the use of um, of recreational cannabis. Uh, however, you should also consider that simultaneously, there is um, a federal law that makes the general use of what, what we call medical cannabis to be illegal. On the other hand, uh, there, are, there are concerns. Uh, well, there are some advantages in that um, you, you have the farm law, uh, the, the farm bill, which uh, goes out there and actually says that in specific situations, you can actually land up using uh, CBD um, in specific scenarios. And it's important to recognize what that means. For example, if you're making claims medical claims using CBD, you're probably going to have problems. There have been numerous citations uh, for companies that are making medical claims. And if you're a pharmacist, either selling them or making cl medical claims for CBD, stay tuned, be careful, um, there, there may be issues. Uh, there have been in the last year, the FDA itself has actually taken a more proactive role. They've gone after CBD companies and THC companies for misbranding and adulteration issues. So stay tuned. Look out for those as we continue. Uh, the next issue that's popped up over time has been the issue of telepharmacy. Telepharmacy, as, as some of you may know, is the use of, uh, thing, well, I'm going to call it Skype or call it um, some of these web conferencing services. Obviously, it's not as simple as that because you have some protection issues that have to kick in. But using uh, tools like Epic, people are using um, ways to virtually consult and connect with patients, with other pharmacists, uh, to provide better care to their patients. There has been a rise of this primarily in the West Coast and the mid, uh, in the Midwest. I would expect that you would see the East Coast starting to join this more and more. Um, the East Coast tends to be a little bit more conservative, so we'll see how that plays itself out. But there has been a rise in uptick for telepharmacy as well. The next thing to think about is the TCP and unwanted calls. So essentially, if you're using uh, unsolicited auto-dialed calls, you may have concerns under the TCPA. CVS Pharmacy agreed to pay $15 million to resolve a class action claims that it made unsolicited auto-dialed flu shot reminder calls to consumers. This went to about 230,000 individuals and they were called with a message offering a uh, CVS Pharmacy shopping pass during its flu shot reminder calling campaign. So again, when big players like CVS are being targeted, um, if you are using um, auto dialing, if you will, um, as part of your marketing campaign, be very careful as a pharmacist. Next comes the issue of privacy. Um, California has passed its own version of what's called GDPR. Uh, that was the European privacy law. And it's, it's called uh, CCPA. And um, if you are a California pharmacy, you should be careful with patient information anyways for HIPAA but again, you may want to be careful with it under CCP as well. Now recognize CCP has certain uh, exceptions for HIPAA, but whether your use is contained within, a, within that exception is still up for grabs. So again, if you have questions about what that means to, for you as a pharmacist, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to talk to you about what that means. Um, another issue that pops up is if you are a large conglomerate of pharmacies, one of the big things that you need to start thinking about is, um, how are you going to keep your executives um, from moving? Because as, again, as a pharmacist, one of the things you want to do is go after your the, the best place you can get paid. Um, there was a CBS executive who tried to do that, and um, 
and essentially what they were told the, the a Rhode Island federal court judge actually pushed back at, because this this uh, individual was moving over to Amazon's mail order service and apparently violated his non-compete um, again if you have individuals like this uh, it, you you might get this sense of oh you know what that means that I can actually protect my intellectual property this is gonna be great however there have been numerous other situations where um, the courts have pushed back against non-competes for being overbroad so what does it mean in your specific state um, you need to be aware of it you need to make sure that your um, your contract controls it um, what a lot of lawyers do in these specific situa situations they'll, is they'll say you know what if my if you as a judge decide that you don't like it just delete that one part and everything else remains enforceable there have been states where the judge basically said you can't put it on me to decide what your contract should be you do you need to do your own work um, so that has you've, you've got to sort of balance this all out so how are you going to play it as you continue um, what's going to also be interesting is that uh, in December in 2019 HHS for the first time unveiled proposed regulations at letting states import prescription drug, uh, drugs from Canada. And you'd actually have to submit a proposal to the FDA for authorization to import, and they'd be given a new NDC code. And a um, gr group of governors from Maine, Colorado, Vermont, and New Hampshire have already expressed interest in this new pathway. Um, and again, th this, this sort of goes in simultaneously with some of the other, uh, other ideas that President Trump has around drug costs. And that specifically talks about things like most favored nation status, where uh, you can the cap the uh, the cost of drugs based on the lowest amount paid in certain other countries. Uh, they would also the the administration is also looking to finalize a international pricing index that would slash reimbursement by, by pegging it to um, prices offered in other developed countries as well. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of work around both drug importation and drug pricing. So that should be interesting as we continue as well. Um, if you are a pharmacist, another thing that's, uh, well, let, let's sort of catch up. So we've got cannabis, the rise of cannabis. You have telepharmacy. You've got TCPA and unwanted calls. Um, you have the issue of privacy and what that means in California, for example. And again, if you're not in California, don't think that you're actually on easy street. There are, I think, about seven other states that are considering various versions of laws that look at uh, patient and individual privacy. Um, the idea of non-competes. And, and how that should be written into your contracts with either your pharmacists, uh, your marketing people, or your executives. The idea of drug importation, what that means for you as a pharmacist, because pharmacies are gonna have a lot more control about it in the context of drug importation. Um, then let's talk about another one, which is a bipartisan bill was introduced in December um, requiring that drug manufacturers and distributors um, and, and pharmacies actually, well, pharmacists uh, would more frequently report on the use of, on, on the use of controlled substances from uh, drug manufacturers and distributors. And this would actually impose additional requirements on pharmacies. Um, we, I believe we used to do it quarterly, it's gonna, it might become monthly. And again, this, is, this has broad bipartisan support. So we'll see how that goes as well. So stay tuned for that piece. And again, if, if you are following the Short Scripts, Short Scripts saga, um, there have been, uh, the FTC actually sued uh, Short Scripts in DC federal court. It alleged that the company used contract terms and other tactics to illegally maintain a monopoly on electronic prescription services. And um, the result of that was there was a riot. Uh, Short Scripts was trying to allegedly uh, preserve its 95% market share to markets. And um, this resulted in what, what, what the FTC called vertical and horizontal restraints. Uh, to, to preserve its uh, monopoly position. Uh, FTC alleges that, uh, that Short Scripts did this in four ways. One is the use of loyalty contracts preventing competitors from attaining the critical mass that would be necessary to be a viable competitor in either routing or eligibility. Uh, the use of alleged threats and other non-merit-based co competition to further ensure no, no competitors could emerge. And this was um, some of their own executives uh, referred to them as nuclear missiles. Um, the third prong was the use of uh, anti-competitive methods such as inking a deal with, Re with Re Relay Health, a subsidiary of McKesson that resells uh, short scripts writing transactions to pharmacies and this provided Relay Health with incentives to convince its, its customers to be loyal to short scripts. 
Uh, and again, this was another problem. Shortscripts obviously asserted that it was reducing the price. Uh, it had reduced the price of electronic prescribing by 70% since 2009, but they were removing these loyalty provisions in their contracts with pharmacies. Uh, Falconer Pharmacy also proposed a class action lawsuit um, based, on, based on this issue as well. So stay tuned. We'll see how Shortscripts goes. Uh, I think it's gonna be really interesting as we continue. And then, um, so we had short scripts, the drama around short scripts, if you will, the DEA proposed bill, uh, drug importation, um, the non use of non-competes, the California pharmacy, uh, sorry, California privacy law. Um, there was TCPA and unwanted calls. Then there was telepharmacy and what that means and how that's going, that's being adopted. And then the rise of cannabis. As a final issue, this is really not within the US, but a UK pharmacy, we, we, we talk about GDPR and we talked about privacy. Um, a UK pharmacy got its first GDPR fine as well for leaving 500,000 documents in unlocked lockers, uh, unlocked containers at the back of its premises. Um, and that obviously means that, and, and they paid a fine of about 275,000 uh, pounds uh, for careless storage of patient data. Now, what does this have to do with us in the US? Um, GDPR perspective, probably not too much. However, from a HIPAA perspective, that, that is basically the same exact issue. So um, as I'm sure you guys know, OCR has been looking at fines in the context of um, not appropriately maintaining privacy. What does this mean for you as a pharmacist? What controls do you have? Start looking into those as well. That's probably a good idea as you continue. If you have questions about uh, what the practice of pharmacy is starting to look like, what does this mean for you? Uh, what are some of the issues you might be facing? How do you actually maintain patient privacy? Um, are, are you right for cannabis? Uh, are, is your marketing up to plan or are, are you going to have other issues? Stay tuned. Uh, I'm also gonna do another talk on um, some of the fraud issues that pharmacies have been getting into and there was so much information up there, out there for, that, uh, for fraud that I had to do a separate podcast on it. So stay tuned for that as well. This is the Darshan Talks Podcast, regulatory guy, irregular podcast with host Darshan Kulkarni. You can find the show on Twitter at Darshan Talks or the show's website at darshantalks.com.